What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and the newest housing data just came out and it said that while mortgage applications are now falling even further, home prices are still going up. What it said is that home sales have dropped around 16% while home prices have gone up by almost 20% over the last year. Now, today, the medium home price in America is right around $450,600. $100. This is the median home in America right now. And to put this in perspective, the median home price in the beginning part of 2020, January 2020, was $329,000. So this is 2020, this was 2022. So the median home prices have gone up significantly over the last couple of years. And now we're starting to see home sales go down, home prices still keep going up, but home prices are still rising. And now this obviously has some people confused. Should you go out right now and buy a home before home prices get even more expensive in the future? Or should you not buy a home right now, wait for home prices to potentially crash, then come in and get a discount? Or should you go out right now and get an adjustable rate mortgage? That way you don't have to pay these higher mortgage rates that we're seeing right now. There's a lot of questions out there and let me answer them. First, on the topic of buying a home for yourself, should you buy it now or should you wait? The real question that you wanna ask yourself is why are you buying this home because the way that I look at it is the home that I live in is not an investment like a traditional investment a rental property or a stock the home that I live in is something that I buy to make memories it's a place that I buy for my family it's a place that I buy for me to spend my own time that is why I buy it so for me I look at my home like I buy a shirt I don't buy this shirt caring about the resale value of this shirt I buy this shirt because I want to wear it I like it and I can afford it can you make money in your home sure but you can also lose money in your home because home prices don't always go up. We saw what happened after the 2008 crash. So instead of trying to perfectly time the market, to perfectly time the livelihood of your family, buy a home that you can afford. And when I say afford, that means three things. You gotta afford the down payment, you gotta afford the monthly payment, and then you got to afford the cost of moving into a home. So the down payment is how much money you put down to buy the home. Uh, typically, you want to put down 20%, but if you are really one of those people where you're like, I don't want to put down 20%, at least put down a decent sized down payment at very least 10%. I mean, at the very, very least 10%, that we at least have some skin in the game. Then you have to afford the monthly payment. Now, this monthly payment, not only is it your mortgage, but it's also your property taxes. Make sure you factor that in there and your insurance, your property insurance. And so what that means is you do not wanna be stretching yourself too thin to buy this home. Now, I'm a real estate salesperson. And when I was 20, I got my real estate salesperson's license. And when I went through my training, one of the things I talk about is how the home that you live in is the biggest investment that you'll ever make. Now, if I tell you that this home that you're gonna buy for your family is the biggest investment that you're ever gonna make, what are you gonna do? Well, if it's an investment, you'll be more likely to stretch yourself a little bit bigger, go a little bit thinner. I mean, it's an investment, right? You can make a lot of money. You can pass it down to your kids and build generational wealth. And so now what you're thinking is not rational, can I afford it? You're thinking, oh, this home will make my family rich. It'll make my family wealthy. It'll give my kids something that I didn't have. And now you're willing to stretch yourself thinner and now you're sacrificing the ability to invest your money into something that can actually make you money today, something that you're buying for the purposes of making money, and you're sacrificing that, that way you can buy this home, which is a money pit, until you actually sell it. And then you have to hope that you can sell it for a profit. For me, the home that I live in is a liability. Whether I rent, whether I own, it doesn't matter. It's a liability. If I wanna make money off of a home, I'm gonna buy a rental property, not the home that I live in. So that's the first thing that I make. So now you have to afford the down payment, you have to afford the monthly payment, and then you gotta afford the move-in costs because now not only do you have to get your stuff into the home, so maybe you need to hire movers, but you also have to think about what upgrades you're gonna make. Are you gonna upgrade the kitchen? Are you gonna upgrade the bathroom? Are you gonna change the flooring? Are you gonna upgrade the furnace? And then what about the new furniture? All of these things can get very expensive very quickly, and if you don't have the extra cash put aside to do it, then you're gonna move in, and then you might get tempted to go into debt to buy that sofa on the buy now, pay later program, where now you're paying off your sofa for the next four years, you're paying off your TV for the next five years, you're paying off your bed set for the next 18 months. Instead of trying to time the market for the home that you live in, buy the right home at the right time for you. If you can afford it, and if it's the right time for you, ignore what's happening in the market. Do what's right for you, and then just make sure you can afford it. 
important. If your goal truly is to make money from the housing market because you see an opportunity, then instead of just buying a home for yourself, consider going out and buying a rental property, an investment property, maybe an apartment complex, because now you're buying this property not for you to live in, not to build memories for your family, not for you to spend your time, but as an investment for the purposes of making money. And now this property will pay you every single month. And now you're buying this asset to make money. Now you can look a lot more at the market factors around you instead of looking at it for the home that you want to spend your time in. The second question that brings up is how should I buy a home right now? Because now not only have housing costs gone up, but mortgage costs have gone up. And there are some alternatives out there that might seem attractive, which could save you some money on your monthly payments today. If you wanted to buy this home in 2021, it might've cost you half a million dollars to buy the home. Now, if you bought this home for half a million dollars and you put 20% down, that means you would have put down $100,000. Now in 2021, you would have been able to get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage at two and a half percent. Now, because you put down 100 grand, that means you're financing $400,000 at this two and a half percent, which means your monthly payment would have been right around $1,600 a month. Now in 2022, the first issue is that housing costs have gone up right around 20%, which means that the housing cost has gone up from $500,000 to now $600,000. And if you put down the same 20%, that means you have to put down now $120,000. That means you're gonna be financing a lot more than before because in this case, you financed $400,000 and in this case, you're financing $480,000. So not only do you need more cash to put down, but you're gonna to be borrowing more money from the bank and then you have to pay more interest on the more dollars that you're borrowing so you're borrowing more dollars and you're paying a higher fee to borrow those dollars because today if you want to get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage you're paying around five and a half percent and the fed has said that they're not done raising interest rates yet so what does that mean now you're borrowing four hundred and eighty thousand dollars at five and a half percent which is going to cost you about twenty seven hundred dollars a month now for the exact same home, assuming no modifications. More than $1,000 a month more for the exact same home, not even looking at the higher down payment and not even looking at now the higher property taxes that you're gonna have to pay on this property because when a property value goes up, your property taxes go up too. So the cost to own this home has gone up significantly. I mean, it's gone up more than 50% significantly higher than the inflation rate, significantly higher than the cost of living because you have a higher cost of the home, a higher amount of down payment, a higher mortgage rate, a higher tax rate, and that starts adding up. This is where people are now starting to look for an alternative because they're saying either I have to live in a smaller home today than what I would have been able to buy a year ago, or I'm just not gonna be able to buy a home. Well, the alternative now is this adjustable rate mortgage, which has been making a pretty big comeback. Now, if you remember from 2008, the adjustable rate mortgage was the mortgage that many people defaulted and foreclosed on because they had this mortgage rate with a teaser rate and then interest rates went up. And then when their mortgage rate started to readjust, they were hit with a significantly higher mortgage rate that they did not expect. And that forced many people into bankruptcy or foreclosure because they saw their monthly payments go from something like $1,600 a month to $2,700 a month. And they couldn't afford these higher payments and they couldn't sell their home because they were underwater. And so many people were forced to sell and we're starting to see more and more of that happen. But the reason why it's so attractive is because, well, in this alternative example, I said as an alternative, the home price is gonna stay the same. It's not gonna change. You're still gonna pay $600,000 for the home. You're gonna put down the same $120,000. I'm just assuming you're putting down 20%. Uh, There's alternatives, but I'm assuming we're sticking with a 20% number. Now, instead of paying 5.5%, what you can do is you can get a 5-1 arm, and the first five years, you're only paying 3.7%, which means your monthly payment might only be around $2,200 a month significantly less than this, it's still more than here, but significantly less than this, that means you could put an extra $500 in your pocket or in your investments or whatever you want. But the risk here is what happens after the first five years. So this is what's called a 5-1 arm. After five years, your mortgage rate is going to readjust. And we don't know where mortgage rates are gonna be in five years. You might say that, hey, the Fed is gonna keep jacking up interest rates because they wanna keep fighting inflation, but there's a chance that they don't. There's a chance that they reverse course and they say, okay, we need to stimulate the economy more and they start cutting interest rates. But there's also a chance that the Fed says, we need to jack up interest rates even more to fight inflation. Like the last time we saw inflation this bad was in the late 1970s. 
And when we had inflation that bad, mortgage rates went up to about 20%, just under 20% to fight that inflation. Now, there's a pretty high chance that our Fed today is not gonna jack up mortgage rates to that extent because it would significantly hurt the economy. So pretty much everybody agrees that mortgage rates are not gonna go that high, but we're already at five and a half percent when you could get a mortgage at two and a half percent last year. So there's really no guarantee on where mortgage rates will be. And when you take this type of arm, you're gambling because we don't know where mortgage rates are gonna be. And you might say, well, Jaspreet, I have a strong feeling that the Fed is gonna start cutting interest rates, that they're gonna to have to fight the slowdown in the economy. So in five years, mortgage rates will be less. So I am taking that gamble and I believe that. Well, my argument is, if that's what you think, fine. But why don't you just take a 30 year fixed rate mortgage and then if you're right and mortgage rates fall, why don't you just refinance into a lower interest rate mortgage? I mean, there's much less risk there because you can always refinance when interest rates go down. But if interest rates go up, you're not going to be having the opportunity to lock in a lower rate. Now, the alternative is what happens if interest rates go up? If you take this 5-1 mortgage, yes, you get to save some money for the first few years. And then if interest rates go up, then what? Well, you're not going to be able to refinance and lock in a lower interest rate mortgage because interest rates are a lot higher and you're going to be stuck with a higher interest rate mortgage. So there's a lot of risk with this type of arm. And the only time if you are considering getting an arm would be a good idea is if you can, with complete certainty, pay off your entire mortgage during this teaser rate, during the first five years, during the initial non-adjusting rate of your mortgage. If you can pay it off, then fine take advantage of this lower interest rate. But if you don't think you can pay it off or you don't plan on paying it off, then why would you want to take all the extra risk with an adjustable rate mortgage? Now, if you're a money nerd and this type of stuff interests you and you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the housing market and the general financial markets, I created Market Briefs, which is a free financial newsletter that my team and I send out every morning, Monday through Friday and Sundays, where we break down exactly what's happening from things like the housing market to the stock market to inflation to the cryptocurrency market to what's happening in the global economy. It's a completely free newsletter. You can read it in five minutes or less every morning. So now you don't have to spend hours trying to source through all the news to figure out what's happening. We break it all down into a fun and witty and entertaining email. So if you want to join Market Briefs, it's completely free. And I'll put the link to how you can do that down in the description below. If you are in the market of buying a home, the point that I want to get across here is that nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the housing market, let alone what's going to happen in the economy, let alone what the Federal Reserve Bank is going to do. All three of these factors together, you can't see the whiteboard when I walk in front of it, but all three of these factors together are going to determine what happens in the housing market because the housing market doesn't work in a bubble. It's not this little vacuum where nothing else affects it. If we go into an economic recession and people start losing their jobs, people are going to struggle to make their mortgage payments. If they struggle to make their mortgage payments, it's going to hurt the housing market. And so there's so many different layers of things that you have to pay attention to. And all that I'm trying to say is instead of you trying to perfectly time the market and trying to guess where housing prices are going to be next year and trying to guess where mortgage rates are going to be in a few years, don't play that game. Instead, play your own finances game. Look at your budget, look at your balance sheet, look at your own income statement, look at how much money you're making. See, can you afford a home? If yes, how big of a home? How big of a down payment can you afford? How big of a monthly payment can you afford? Then, based off of that data, go out and start shopping around. And you know, when you're looking for mortgages, obviously shop around your mortgages to make sure you have a good mortgage, but don't try to play the market game. Just look for a home that fits within your budget because there's a chance that the Fed starts cutting interest rates to fight this potential economic slowdown, this potential recession. And if they do that, well, home prices will probably continue to go up even higher because now they're putting more money into the economy and makes mortgages even cheaper. And if you lock in a mortgage before, then you can just refinance into a cheaper mortgage. So there's a lot of options, but the key here is not trying to time the market, but instead really just being a more astute investor and being a more astute financial person where now you're looking at your own finances, you're looking at your own balance sheet and you're saying, okay, I can afford now and this is what I can afford. This is how much I can afford because you do not want to stretch yourself too thin to buy a home because while home ownership can be great, if you're stretching yourself too thin to buy a home just because you want to buy a home just because you think it's going to make you rich, just because you think you can build generational wealth, that's a big lie, okay? The key here is you want to live in a home that you can afford and then invest, 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 invest. It doesn't have to be in the home that you live in. In fact, you can build even more wealth if you have other investments, things like real estate investments, things like stock investments, things like building your own business or investing or owning other businesses. These things can build you even more wealth, but it requires a financial education and that requires you 
not to stretch yourself too thin, just to be a homeowner, to be a homeowner. And I know this can be a tough conversation because everybody talks about how home ownership is the holy grail of building wealth. It's the American dream. If you own a home, you can have your own piece of land and you can pass it down and you, you own something. There's so many other ways and you just do not want to stretch yourself too thin to be a homeowner for the sake of being a homeowner. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see why the housing market is about to go even more insane, I made a video covering all of that and you can watch it on YouTube by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. It's a gamble and I would not want to be gambling with the livelihood of myself and my family 